This is the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus, and I wanna see whether or not it can become my secondary or even main camera for my YouTube channels. And to see just how good it is, I'm gonna be comparing it to my semi-professional camera, the Panasonic Lumix GH5. And we're gonna test it in a variety of situations. But you know when you get that thing called buyer's remorse and you're not sure if you made the right move? Well, I kind of have that with this phone. You see YouTubers like Ryan Trahan and Marquez Brownlee often use the iPhone 15 Pro to film their secondary content like their vlog footage because it delivers such a high quality picture. Now I wanted to move away from the whole iPhone ecosystem and that's why I got a Samsung, but I'm not sure if I made the right move here. Should I have stayed within the Apple family and gotten the iPhone 15 Pro? Well. Let's find out. So to see whether this $1,600 phone will be a great creator companion, I'm gonna be putting it through a few situations that a YouTuber would often find themselves in. The first of which is vlogging, where I think filming on your phone actually has a huge advantage here. For one, it's less conspicuous. You know, everyone films with their phones these days. It's not like you're walking around with this big camera and mic set up that just screams out that you're a YouTuber. Two, it's easy to set up and begin filming at a moment's notice, meaning you can capture footage when a situation arises. And three, it's a lot lighter than one of these bad boys. And if you're holding this out with your arm, your arm's gonna get sore after a while, but a phone, you know, it's a lot lighter, a lot easier to do that. So for this phone to be good in this area, there's a few things that it needs to perform well in. Picture quality, stabilization, focus pulling, and mic quality. And to test it, I went to this extremely beautiful location in the Blue Mountains. So the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus has four different cameras on board, three on the back and one on the front. On the back, we have two 12 megapixel cameras and one 50 megapixel camera. And on the front, we have a 12 megapixel front facing selfie camera. Now the great thing here is unlike my iPhone SE, this phone can actually record in up to ultra HD with the front facing camera. So that's 2160 by 3840 pixels at up to 60 frames per second, which sounds impressive and honestly is impressive, but how does it look? Well, take a look for yourself. Honestly, in my opinion, I think this looks really good and is serviceable as a camera on the go. The benefit of using this front facing camera is I can actually see myself filming. So in a vlogging situation, this is much more ideal than using the back cameras. The colors can look a little bit contrasty and there is a fair bit of noise, but overall the image quality looks quite nice. And the stabilization was actually really good, especially considering I was walking over rocky ground with ups and downs that I had to step through. And when you attach this to a gimbal like the DJI Osmo, it gets even smoother. But we'll look at stabilization in depth a little bit later on. But back to the camera, in terms of lighting, it did adjust when I turned to face into the sun, which was pretty good. You know, I wasn't completely washed out or blacked out. You could still see my face quite clearly in both situations. Although you'll see there is a little bit of a lens flare here. Now this could come from my screen protector, but I doubt it. And I think it's just from the camera itself. Honestly, I think it looks pretty cool though. But when I conducted this test, there was one thing that worried me when I came back to my studio to review the footage. And that was the mic quality. And it sounded terrible. So this is just a quick vlogging test. And I thought to myself, how could it be that bad? Like surely it's using the same microphone as the back facing cameras, which as you'll see in a little bit, sound pretty good. So what was going on? And then I realized that my big fat hand was covering the microphone port. So it's something you need to pay attention to when filming with a phone. But here's another quick mic test using that front facing camera. So you can hear that it actually does sound okay. So this is just a second audio test proving that the microphone on this is not that bad. Now let's take a look at the main camera on the back set to ultra HD and 30 frames per second. It definitely handled the light a lot better and the overall image does look a lot nicer. However, there was a little bit more of a lens flare coming from this and I didn't have a phone case on. There wasn't really any smudges or dust on the lens. So I think this is just from the glass from the camera. This only really happened when the phone was pointing directly towards the sun, but it's something to keep in mind when filming outdoors. But overall, the colors look a lot nicer, especially on my face. And the only downside is I can't see what I'm filming with the camera because obviously it's facing away from me. But that being said, after doing a few tests, you kind of get used to where you need to hold your arm away from your body to capture everything in frame. But what's really cool about this is you can capture 8K footage, which my Panasonic camera can't even do. Although this is when I encountered one slight problem with this back camera. I began to film this beautiful landscape and then turn it around to me to vlog my face, which is something you would naturally do in that situation. And I was completely out of focus the entire time because the focus was set to that landscape 
and it didn't automatically adjust. Now feeling a little bit worried about this focus pulling issue, I wanted to conduct a further test. And so I went to this beautiful lookout and focused my camera on my tripod and then moved it to the scenery to see how well it would autofocus and adjust. And with the default camera mode, it didn't really do it that well. You had to physically touch the screen to adjust the focus, which is not something I necessarily want to do. But there is a workaround which works fantastic. Because if you tap this more button, you have a bunch of different camera options, including pro video. This will allow you to control a bunch of different features within the camera, including ISO, your focus, shutter speed, and white balance, but we're gonna focus on the focusing. Now, if we click on this, we can set it to manual and adjust the focus range where we want it to be. This is great if you want specific control of your focus, but for me, I want it to auto focus on what's in the center of my frame. So we can just click on this center button. And now when I move the camera, keeping the tripod in the center, you'll see that it auto focuses to the scenery when I move it across. And honestly, this is the best way I've found to film with this phone, keeping everything you want in focus as you move around to different locations or you're filming different things. Now also when you're vlogging, if you attach a mini tripod like this Manfrotto one, it makes it a lot easier to hold the phone out from you and vlog with that. But overall, when you compare this to my Panasonic camera, it is night and day and how much easier it is to vlog with this and the quality is really, really good. But despite the resolution being a lot higher with the Samsung camera, the Panasonic Lumix still looks a little bit nicer in my opinion, though the weight comparison makes it a no brainer. I'll be using the Samsung to vlog anytime I want to out in public because holding that camera out in front of you, it's a workout and a half. But what about something that's even more important for video? sound quality. Well, when you're not covering up the mic, it's actually really good. And you have a bunch of different recording options within the pro video mode, which is fantastic. You can change the mic to record omnidirectional, meaning everything around you in a 360 degree radius, or you can have it so it focuses on the sound coming from the front of the camera or the back of the camera. So this is the sound quality recording in a studio space with a bit of echo using the omnidirectional function. And this is the audio quality using the rear audio setting. And then this is the audio quality using the front audio setting, which doesn't sound good now, but if I walk around behind the camera and start speaking here, you can hear that it's a lot better for this sort of scenario. And when you compare it to my inbuilt mic on my Panasonic camera, it holds up and it's actually really good, even from a distance away from the camera. So just testing the audio quality of the camera versus the smartphone, about two and a half meters away. So just testing the audio quality of the camera versus the smartphone, about two and a half meters away. So to show you just how good this is, this is the sound quality with the camera about 50 centimeters away from me in a studio space. So this is just a quick sound test in my studio space. It's about four by four meters. There's no real soundproofing in here. So there's a little bit of an echo that I'm sure you're picking up right now, but this is how it sounds. This next clip shows off the mic quality when I'm standing out in a windy area outside. So I'm at this lookout here and this is the audio quality being outside in a nice windy area. So beautiful though. And then for the final test, here's me just holding the microphone up close to my mouth, hearing how it sounds. And all of this is entirely usable within content. But back to that pro video mode, you can also select USB cameras or a mix of that to record your audio. So with the right attachments and microphones, you can get even crisper audio with this phone. I tried connecting my Sennheiser XS microphone to this camera with an adapter, but the adapter was old and didn't really work and it, the sound just was terrible. So so I need to find a new adapter and test this out further because if I could get that to work, I would have a really, really professional setup, basically like a Ryan Trahan setup that I could use anywhere I want to go and get really good audio and good video at the same time. It would be a dream vlogging setup. But speaking of a dream, what about that 8K footage at 30 frames per second? It's really nice, especially giving you the ability to crop in on footage and still have a bunch of resolution, even if you're going to export it at 4K. Now, don't get me wrong. The image quality is not comparable to a professional camera like a RED camera, but it looks really good, especially when filmed on a tripod. Like look at this footage filming at this lookout with the camera on a tripod. It's so crisp, it looks so good. And honestly, you wouldn't even tell it's filmed on a smartphone. And I gotta say in a lot of circumstances, it's gonna be just as good as my Panasonic camera, if not better because of how easy it is to use and set up. But how does it compare at studio filming? Filming in well-lit scenarios like this, where I have a nice light, a studio setup, a nice background, well, You've actually been seeing it the whole time. This entire video has been recorded using the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus. I've been filming this in 8K resolution at 30 frames per second, and honestly, it looks really good. Some of the colors are a little bit oversaturated, especially these blue hues, but overall, 
it's really, really serviceable. And if I didn't have a high quality camera, I could honestly just start a YouTube channel with this phone. Now for a comparison, here's a quick clip of me actually using my Panasonic camera to film in the same setup. And you can see that the image quality is different. The depth of field is a little bit nicer on my Panasonic camera, but overall there's not really a huge difference. Does that mean I'm gonna replace my Panasonic camera with this Samsung when I'm filming in studios? Well, nah. But if I was starting from scratch again, I didn't have anything, just this phone, I think I'd be in a good place. But what about secondary clips like B-roll and time lapses? How does this phone perform in that area? Well, using the inbuilt camera modes like hyperlapse, the Samsung can produce some really cool shots that you can use within your videos. And you can record these hyperlapses in Ultra HD resolution, which is fantastic. And on top of that, you can also set the duration that you want it to record these time lapses for, meaning you can just set up your camera, leave it and forget about it and have a really cool time lapse when you come back. Though if you watch this one that I recorded at this look at, you still do see that lens flare, meaning you do need to be a little bit conscious about your lighting when you're setting these up. But if you wanna get even fancier, you can use a mobile gimbal like the DJI Osmo and set it up to pan from left to right while taking a hyperlapse and you can get some really cool professional shots with movement in them. And with these settings and the gimbal, it's so much easier to take hyperlapses and time lapses using this phone when compared to my Panasonic camera. Now in terms of B-roll, the footage is really serviceable and it's great for quick situations where you wanna just pull out your camera, get a shot of something that's going on that you can put into your video. And the camera stabilization with this phone at its default settings is pretty good. Now you also have a stabilization mode and you can make all of these shots even smoother by using a mobile gimbal which can also help you get shots like this using just this joystick to get really smooth panning shots. And I wanted to do a quick test to compare the stabilization of the default camera versus the stabilization mode versus the gimbal. And you can see that the default mode and the stabilization mode looked really good. And then when I came to film the gimbal, it was honestly terrible. It was super jittery and I didn't know what was going on. Turns out the app DJI created for this gimbal doesn't work great with Android phones. Go figure. So you can't really get smooth footage using your phone and the DJI app with the gimbal. You have to just use the default camera app with the phone, meaning you don't get any of the functions from the DJI app, which really sucks. One thing I will say that makes up for the DJI Osmos app not working great is the auto tracking feature, which I've had a lot of fun with. So in the app, when it works, you can drag a box around the subject you want the gimbal to track. And then when you move around, the camera is going to move with that, keeping the tracked object in the center of the frame. It also means it can be a great solo filmmaker's tool because you can set this phone up on the gimbal and have it track you around the room as you're doing things, which is something you just can't do by yourself. But now we move on to something that is really fun to do for B-roll, filming in slow motion. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in 8K, but at Ultra HD, you can go all the way up to 120 frames per second. And at Full HD, you can go all the way up to 240 frames per second, which is really nice and slow and makes footage look really cool. And with the new S24 range, there's also an AI powered slow motion feature, meaning you can film footage in the normal resolution at the normal frame rate, and then slow it down in post on the phone and it's gonna fill in those extra frames with AI generated frames to make it look like it's slow motion. And if you film at Ultra HD, you can go all the way up to one eighth of the speed if you film at 60 frames per second, which is a really great feature giving you flexibility with your filming. That being said, it doesn't work with 8K footage and some things do look a little bit funky when you use this feature. And the slow-mo feature can work really good at nighttime as well, like these fireworks and these bikes jumping over this ramp. So another thing I just remembered is you can't zoom in the camera when using this mode. And you'll also see there's a fair bit of noise when it comes to filming at night with these cameras, especially in the 8K mode. As soon as you zoom in a little bit, you can see there's a lot of noise in dark situations, which is not ideal, but overall it works pretty good considering it's a phone. And if you go into the pro video mode, you can adjust the ISO and all these things so you don't have as much noise and grain in your footage. So will this Samsung phone replace my Panasonic camera? Well, in some situations, actually, yes. But overall, I'm happy with the performance of the cameras on this phone. I think it's gonna make a great secondary tool for my YouTube videos. Peace, and remember, you're only one video away.